Thank you. Um, let's see if I got this here. My name is Mark, Mar Mark Morano, the editor of climatedepot.com, your daily news and information site. I came over from the in, uh, Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, having worked for Senator James Inhofe, the man who stood up in 2003 and basically told John McCain and Joe Lieberman that no cap and trade bill was going to make it to the United States Senate. And he, went to, he stood by his word. It was a lone battle until this last time around, he was joined by even liberals like Al Franken of Minnesota in opposing the climate bill. So he was a visionary. And this is the end of my slide. That's interesting. So hold on one sec here. We start it over. How do you do this, Ray? OK. My credentials. There we go. <laughs> I have RIP, man-made global warming fears, and I put 1988 to 2001. And I've given this a few times. The question mark appears, disappears. The question mark is back because this is like a hydra. This is a zombie. It keeps coming back. There's so much funding, so much infrastructure. I don't think we can ever declare victory on man-made global warming, not for the foreseeable future. Hold on one sec. Oh, that's worse. OK. My credentials. This is, uh, this is Andrew Watson, one of the ClimateGate professors in the BBC debate right during the height of ClimateGate. He got very frustrated, very upset. I was quoting all the other scientists uh, from the UN IPCC who were disgusted with this, and he was defending uh, the home front with the climate gate. This is what we've witnessed. Subprime science, subprime economics, and subprime politics. It had to happen. The real estate market had a bubble. St Wall Street had a bubble that had to be bailed out. It was inevitable that the global warming industry was going to have its bubble. So I say celebrate. Climate legislation is dead for the foreseeable future in the United States. That's not to exclude the EPA, uh, but it looks like that may be tabled until after the next election. Grist Magazine, the environmentalist, this really weak environmental movement. My favorite quote from Brad Johnson of Think Progress, all I can say is, wow, we suck, climate movement. <laughs> this is to celebrate. Gallup poll, 111 countries, April of this year. The majority of the human race does not see global warming as a serious threat. <laughs> Celebrate. And this is not people in Australia and Bangladesh and Europe are not watching Fox News or listening to Rush Limbaugh, so you can't blame it on that. <laughs> climate scientist Richard Lindzen, I think, explains it the best. Ordinary people see through man-made climate fears, but the educated are very vulnerable. <laughs> And that would explain a lot. Obama has even given up. And we'll get to Al Gore in a minute. But Obama drops all talk. It's dead as a major issue. This is from the Copenhagen conference. People like Bill McKibbian got so upset with Obama, they were out there chanting, Obama, shame on you. George W. Obama. <laughs> New Republic, the warmest. Has the green movement been a miserable flop? What the hell went wrong? James Lovelock, the man who said we're only going to have a few breeding pairs of people survive in the Arctic. This was back in 2007. He was quoted on every newspaper in the UK. He's, he's the UK's uh, James Hansen. This is, we were all going to die. Look what a few years in Climategate does to James Lovelock. Did I say billions of us would die? In 2010, Lovelock now says they may be wrong. It may not happen. We may have a thousand years to sort it out. We haven't got the physics worked out yet. James Lovelock, James, the James Hansen of the UK, reversed himself. This was the, the guy who invented the Gaia Earth theory, that the Earth is a living, breathing organism. This is a major figure in the environmental movement, now has reversed himself. Nosedive. Puzzled historians will one day ask how the great global warming scare died so suddenly. So what happened? Any guesses? How did it die? Well, <laughs> we're getting there. Scientific crap. And I actually got this off uh, uh, Anthony Watts' website, this photo. I don't know where you got it, but it's a great set, bitch here. There's no, no, you don't need to go into PhD dissertations of what happened. There it is. Award-winning physicist Robert Austin, I view it as science fraud, pure and simple. This was Climategate. Keep in mind, more Americans believed in haunted houses than man-made global warming in October 2009, pre-Climategate. So climate gate wasn't the only answer. And then, of course, all the other gates, the most recent being the uh, Greenpeace Green 
uh, a renewable energy report that came out. It turned out from the UN. It was authored by Greenpeace, uh, a Greenpeace press release. Even Newsweek has given up on them. They now say uncertain science, uh, a cascade of sandals, scandals. Once celebrated researchers of the UN are now like used car salesmen. <laughs> Newsweek. This made the pages of Newsweek. Gore describes Obama as failing, no change from the Bush era. He's not defended the science. And you know, I call him lovingly George W. Obama. Obama's lack at international diplomacy was the greatest asset we had going for us in Copenhagen. He went in there, completely botched the summit, and then had to rush home to DC because we were facing a massive blizzard, no doubt caused by global warming. Democrat Walter Russell Meade has been writing fantastic stuff just this week. Gore stared the Green Movement into a tsunami of defeat that will loom as one of the greatest failures of civil society of all time. <laughs> Celebrate. And this is my analysis. A movement that had Al Gore as the face of your movement, regardless of what you think of him, one of the most divisive political figures as the face of the global warming movement and the United Nations, a scandal ribbon group that the American people inherently distrust as the source of your science, was literally doomed to failure from the beginning. Throw in a Nobel Prize and a Hollywood Oscar and you're further dooming the movement. <laughs> but, and here's where we're going to get a little controversial. Are we snatching defeat from the jaws of victory? Right now, the GOP is fielding candidates to challenge President Obama. Oh, E-harmony, okay. That's Newt Gingrich and Nancy Pelosi in 2008 sitting on a love seat in front of the Capitol on behalf of Al Gore. Newt and Nancy. Newt Gingrich says he was debating Nancy Pelosi. I kid you not. He says this was his way of engaging the other side, that when you, you need a seat at the table with Al Gore and Nancy Pelosi. Well, my point is if you get near a table with Al Gore and Nancy Pelosi, you should be kicking the table over, not sitting down and joining them. And that's what Newt Gingrich has done. He's refused to apologize for this ad. Newt Gingrich on this issue has been, he was, he was originally back in the first Earth Summit in Rio uh, on the wrong side of the issue. He was, at, was telling congressional staffers a few years ago, Republicans need to get on the global warming bandwagon. He is clueless when it comes to this. But there's a third one on the seat. Oh no. Who is that in the middle? Mitt Romney has joined them on the love seat. Romney's new book touts gore-like warmest views. Are you nearly unanimous in laying the blame on rising temperatures? And he believes climate change is occurring. What a shocking statement that the earth is changing. But Mitt Romney is now aping this idea of the overwhelming consensus. So much so that Al Gore, who's already dissed Obama, may be endorsing Mitt Romney. Gore said, good for Mitt. He's saying Mitt is not the anti-science GOP. So Mitt Romney is a very um, threatening figure to have as the GOP standard bearer on this issue, if you, if you care about this issue. GOP presidential hopeful John Huntsman, he claimed the 90% figure. You guys have heard the 97% consensus. It turns out it's 75 anonymous professors, which no one will release the names of, that they base this figure on. And you'll see it everywhere. The study started out with thousands. They kept selecting it down. They finally found 75 anonymous professors that they could come out and say, there's 97% who agree. And now you're seeing this pop up everywhere. My comment on Huntsman, it's not that GOP primary voters will reject him. It's they will simply not consider him at all, and for a host of other reasons, too. We can't go back to Bush. Now, this is, uh, you know, I was at the United Nations meeting with the Bush negotiators. It was kind of a nauseating sight. George Bush accepted the science, rejected their so-called solutions, allowed all the funding, gave them intellectual um, uh, uh, sustenance all those years said we were addicted to oil. No, Mr. President, we weren't addicted to oil. We were addicted to low infant mortality, long life, a modern way of living. George Bush did a lot of damage. He did hold us back against cap and trade, but you know what? So did Obama. He did stop us from signing a U UN treaty, but then you know what? So did Obama. So I think George Bush deserves some scorn in this whole thing. Other potential GOP candidates, Chris Christie. So many Tea Party members, people all excited. Chris Christie, Chris Christie. He is now citing 90% of the world scientists agree. He is doing this as a political calculation. And on energy policy, all he talks about is banning coal and putting offshore windmills in New Jersey. He couldn't be more clueless when it comes to climate and energy. Another very dangerous man when it comes to this issue. Tim Pawlenty, who would have thought 
a, a Minnesota governor would reverse himself to this extent. He used to travel around Minnesota with Will Steiger. I believe he once appeared with Sheryl Crow. He was the Republican Al Gore back in 2007. He has now completely reversed himself. It might be because the new political expediency uh, is skepticism, but he now says that global warming, uh, he does not buy into the man-made global warming fear. Michelle Bachman, what's interesting is not so much that she's a skeptic, but when she goes out and speaks, she gets cheers and, uh, and the most response when she talks about climate change. People out there are excited to have a candidate willing to stand up to the media and the United Nations claims. If you go back, uh, it wasn't so much the Tea Party that killed the climate bill, it was the town hall meetings. After Congress voted in June of 2009 for the Pelosi-led cap-and-trade bill, the, um, the Democrats went home to their districts. They were booed, jeered, laughed at at town hall meetings in their own districts every time they brought up global warming and tried to claim there was a consensus. That had more to do with th that bill dying and Democrats running scared with the town hall meetings in 2009. Rick Santorum, another candidate, he's a skeptic. Ron Paul, Herman Cain, Texas Governor Rick Perry, who may enter the race. Global warming is all one contrived, phony mess that is falling apart under its own weight. And that's a peer-reviewed statement. Okay, a cheap, uh, cheap promotion of myself, not quite an a-hole comment, but Sierra Close Carl Pope just said two weeks ago, all the GOP candidates seem mindful of the remarkable know-nothing standard set by yours truly, Mark Morano. So I take that as a compliment from Carl Pope. And here's one of the advice that I tell candidates, it's to not get too deep in, especially if a candidate has no science background. This comes from Philip Stott. Climate is governed by hundreds of factors. The very idea we can manage it predictably on, by, on the margins by doing one politically selected factor, CO2, is as misguided as it gets. And to me, that's the crux of the entire debate when it comes to public policy. The best science, politics, and funding can manufacture. Ralph Cicerone, the president of the National Academy of Sciences, according to the Washington Times, $6 million study was then used to lobby Congress for cap and trade. Richard Lindzen said if the U.S. Congress wants the National Academy of Sciences to say global warming is a problem, by God, they're paid to do it. And they'll say it. That's what we've come to. Uh, this is the hottest year claims. A lot of you will hear this. The politicians are hit with this. The media hits this. It is a joke. It's literally hundreds of a degree uh, Fahrenheit that's beyond any margin of error they have, yet people will still say 2010 tied for the hottest year. It's a political statement. I have an entire like 4,000 word report on Climate Depot about this. Astrology. Whether the ice caps melt or expand, it confirms their theory. <laughs> Unfalsifi unfalsifiable. This was actually a study out 30 contradictory papers, just as a small sampling. Boreal fires may increase, they may decrease. Great Lakes, less snow, Great Lakes, more snow. Going through peer-reviewed journals and just saying all the contradictions. So guess what? Anything that happens was predicted in the peer-reviewed process. Hey, we predicted that, but you also predicted the opposite. So what? We predicted it. We were right. It has been foretold of extreme weather. That's where they are now. Every weather event is proof of the theory. Michigan Senator Debbie Stabenow, not a made-up quote. Global warming creates volatility. I feel it when I'm flying. <laughs> the storms are more volatile. This is what I had to deal with in the United States Senate. I only lasted three years. <laughs> this is a great quote from Roger Pilkey, uh, Jr. The U uh, UNIPC science has similar status to interpretations of Nostradamus and the Mayan calendar. And uh, Regenda Pachari announced they're going to be studying extreme weather fingerprints this fall. Gee, I wonder if that report, I wonder what the conclusion of their report's going to be. Uh, Greenpeace better get working on their pre press releases in a hurry to put, get the IPCC label on it. So have we advanced? Here's a witch trial. During the Ice Age, women suspected of being witches were accused of changing the weather. Today, your SUV is changing the weather. Your heated house, your air-conditioned house is changing the weather. Lower temps cause a statistical increase in witch trials. This is according to the Journal of Economic Perspectives, a serious scholarly study. But in 2011, blizzards, heat waves, floods, droughts, all caused a statistical increase in the claims of proof of man-made global warming. We're literally following witchcraft. Before, and when people talk about this, you'll hear people like Jeff Masters, you'll hear um, like Bob Carell, well, the weather was never like that when I was, this is the worst, wildest weather I've seen in 30 years. The earth is geologically billions of years old, and you're trying to say that this means something for you? Before the witch moved in the neighborhood, we never had bad weather. That's literally the level of science we're talking about. A medieval pope actually did this, the, the, the version of the UNIPCC. 
It is reasonable to conclude that just as easily as witches raise hailstorms, they can cause lightning and storms at sea. And no doubt, uh, no doubt remains at all these points. There was a consensus, no doubt. Today, climate astrology, Gore claims increased heavy snowfalls are completely consistent with man-made global warming. Despite the fact he never in once in his film or book mentioned record snowfall, record cold as one of the things that could happen. New York Times, one of my favorite op-eds they did, bundle up, it's global warming. <laughs> and I actually debated Center for American Progress, Joe Rome's group, and Michael Tobis, a warmist, actually said that I won the debate because they were tricked by me. He, and he advised, he advised Center for American Progress against blaming every weird weather on man-made global warming. Do you think they'll listen? I don't think so. From Babylon to the to Gilgamesh, the post-Eden uh, post of Noah, every age has viewed climate change cataclysmically as retribution for human greed and sinfulness. Ted Turner, not doing something will be catastrophic. None of the crops will grow. Remember the witchcraft? The witches stopped the crops from growing. Most people will have died, and the rest of us will be, wait for it, cannibals. <laughs> Apocalyptic minister Joe Rome, repent or die. Climate Depot and what's up with that, I believe at the time, he also said disinformation. If people listen to our websites, a large fraction, I'm sorry, people will suffer unspeakable misery and violence, and it will happen to billions of people. NASA's James Hansen endorsed a book for rolling back modern civilization. He declared the author has it right. The book calls for raising cities to the ground and blowing up dams. James Hansen, a NASA scientist, NASA's $1.2 million man, has said this, the media ignores it. That's uh, Harold Camping uh, talking about Hollywood director James Camping. This is a quote from James Cameron, and that's Harold Camping, the man, uh, the end of the earth doomsday man. If we don't do something, we're all going to die. What's it going to take? A big effing disaster with all kinds of people dying. This is the Hollywood's version of their belief in global warming. Roger Pokey Jr., there's something about climate that makes people not limited to academics completely and utterly lose their senses. So I think I'm out of time right now, but I, I was going on, and basically it's a, it's a primitive uh, way of looking at this that we have not advanced. That's the Aztecs. They actually slaughtered people in 1450 to end a drought. And today, the modern equivalent of that is the 1.6 billion people without running water and electricity. President Obama is preventing coal plants in Africa through the World Bank. They've stopped um, all kinds of development there. Instead, they want to give them solar panels on their huts. They are the modern-day human sacrifice. So thank you.